The train has changed the world we live in more than any other single machine. From the moment the first locomotive steamed into action, designers have been building trains to go faster and faster. 100 miles an hour. 200 miles an hour. And now 350 miles an hour. When you think of what a train actually does, the loads it carries, the speeds it goes, it's pretty astounding, really. It's a rush. I mean, you get on the train and it accelerates. It's kind of like flying on the ground. We're going nine times the speed of sound, or Mach 9, tomorrow night. And maybe, in the not-too-distant future, the ultimate train will go supersonic. Two, one, zero, fire. High-speed rail is at the forefront of transport technology. Today's machines are the result of over 200 years of innovation and craft. Countries around the world are now locked in a battle of technology to produce the fastest and best railway system on Earth. In America, more than anywhere else, the unstoppable rise of the automobile and the plane over the last century has beaten the train into near submission. But with gridlocked roads and crowded skies now a daily occurrence, train technology is again making a comeback. In the year 2000, Amtrak unveiled their answer to the 21st century's transport problems. The Acela Express represents a new dawn for American travel. The Acela is faster than any train America has seen before, travelling at 150 miles an hour along a 100-year-old route known as the Northeast Corridor. Inside, the passenger car is smooth, near silent. Only the view tells you the speed. But as any train driver will tell you, nothing beats the sensation you get sitting up front. It's a rush. I mean, you get on the train and it accelerates, and you get up to 150 miles an hour, and. It's kind of like flying on the ground. To achieve 150 miles an hour, the Acela draws over 9,000 kilowatts of power supplied from overhead lines. The locomotive has an enormous traction motor and is shaped for aerodynamic efficiency and stability. The Acela is very, very technically advanced because of the onboard computer systems that we use to actually operate the train the computers that the engineer uses to control the speed of the train, the acceleration. When you're driving an Acela, you're at the helm of over 500 tonnes of steel and over 300 lives. At the Amtrak headquarters in Wilmington, Jay Gilfillan instructs engineers how to drive at 150 miles an hour. This simulator replicates every detail and sensation of driving the real Acela. I think the hardest part is that there's so much that you have to do at one time, so many things you have to look at, but it's once you get the feel of it, it's, it's just like driving a car. It becomes second nature to you. The acceleration rate is phenomenal because we actually have two power cars. There's the one that we're in, and then there's one on the other end that's pushing. At some of the speeds that we're going, 150 miles an hour, it will take me almost a mile to get it stopped. Uh, we're going the length of a football field in three quarters of a second. 
So there's 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 no time for games up here. It's uh, it's very serious business. The Acela's top speed is limited by the old twisty tracks of the Northeast Corridor. To maintain high speeds on the bends, the Acela carriages are designed to lean into the corners like a row of cyclists. As a result, it can corner 30% faster than other trains along the route. As the car goes into a curve, there's the car will literally tilt or lean to compensate for the gravitational force of going around the curve. And then when it gets back out on the straight, the computer will say, OK, straighten the car back up. On the power car is a transducer that measures acceleration, deacceleration, the lateral g-forces, and it'll take that information and send it back to the computer on board the coach for the tilting system and tells the computer, OK, I need you to tilt x number of degrees based on how fast we're going and the lateral forces that we're experiencing. Amtrak is confident that their new high-speed train set will make a significant dent in the fortunes of the airlines. From downtown New York to downtown Washington, D.C., the Acela claims to be able to get you to your destination faster than any of its rivals. So we decided to put their claim and their train to the test. Every day, tens of thousands of people make the journey from New York to Washington, D.C. And the best way to get there is a matter of hot debate. Meet Hadley and Sarah. Hadley Wasson prefers to make the journey by plane. Sarah Sattel swears by the Acela Express. They're making the same journey from the Empire State Building to the White House, and it's a race to see who gets there first. Let's go. One, two, three. <laughs> JFK Airport, please. Penn Station, please. Sarah's short journey to Pennsylvania Station in the heart of Manhattan should take minutes. Hadley, on the other hand, has to take a cab to JFK Airport, 17 miles from the Empire State through New York's worst traffic bottlenecks. Once through security and check-in, Hadley's flight will take her direct to Reagan Airport. Sarah will board the Acela, riding the 230 miles to downtown DC by train. Then it's a race by taxi to the White House. I prefer flying because taking the train can be more expensive than taking a plane. The time that you save really isn't all that much, and I don't think you even do save any time. The only irritating thing about flying is having to go through security. Hadley's going to be left in the dust. Sarah's going to emerge the winner. Oh, I'm going to win. They're both sure of success, but who will get there first? 